Hello and welcome to the discrete math site. Today I'm going to talk about two important functions in discrete mathematics and in computer science, uh, floor and <coughs> ceiling functions. We start by uh, giving the definition of these functions and then uh, we look into some of uh, the properties of these functions. Uh, the floor function is a function from the set of real numbers to the set of integers. And the floor function is the largest integer less or equal than x. The ceiling function, same from r into z, and the floor, the ceiling function of x is the smallest integer greater or equal than x. So if you look at the <coughs> sketch here, if x here between two integers, the seeding function is this point right here, and the floor function is this point like here. See the floor function, there's two things down here underneath it, and the seeding function is on top here. And x is between the floor function of x and the seeding function of x. And actually, this one is less than x plus 1. And this point here is greater than x minus 1. Uh, some examples. Uh, the seating, uh, floor function of 3.2 is 3. And the floor function of 3.9 is also 3. So we're not really rounding. Uh, the seating function of 3.2 is 4 and the ceiling function of 4.9 is also 4 and you notice that these functions are not one to one functions uh, the floor function of x is <coughs> of 5 is 5 the ceiling function of 5 is also 5 now if you want to find out what is the floor function of negative 2.58 and the ceiling function of negative 2.8 I think it helps to do some graph here, sketch it. So this is a negative two, this is negative three, and negative 2.8 is right here. So the floor function is down here, is negative three. The ceiling function at this point here is negative two, is negative two. Properties, uh, if n is an integer and x is a real number, so x between <coughs> n and n plus one, this point here is the ceiling function of x. This point here, n, is the floor function of x. So the floor function of x is n if and only if x greater or equal than n, but strictly less than n plus 1. And the ceiling function of x is n plus 1 if and only if x is greater than n and less or equal than n plus 1. <coughs> These are easily, you can easily uh, verify these properties. This one here, uh, will uh, sh I will show you one of them uh, in the next slide. But basically, the floor function of negative x is negative the ceiling function of x. See that it changes. And the ceiling function of negative x is equal to the negative floor function of x. Here are um, some examples. First, uh, or a, uh, the <coughs> floor function of a plus b, and the floor function of a plus the floor function of b, are they always equal? Now, if you want to prove this to be equal, you have to, to prove it to be equal for any a and any b. So uh, if you say like, okay, let's take, if you take a, say uh, 2.5, and if you take B, say 6.1, now the floor function of A is two, and the floor function of B is six. You add them, you get eight. Now, if you add A plus B, 
you get what 8.6 and the floor function of a plus b is 8 and they're equal in this case but that's not necessarily the same for any values of a and b so what you can do here if you take keep this example here keep a 2.5 now take b say 6.7 now again the floor function of a is still 2 sorry about that and the floor function of b is still 6 but when you add them a plus b you get now 9 Point two, and the floor function of a plus b this time floor function of 9.2 is 9 and it's not equal to see they are not equal so let, no in general they are not equal actually you can give a really simple counter example uh, to show that uh, these are not always this the case that they are not always equal here's a very simple example take a equals 0.5 and b equals 0.5 so when you add them together you get one so the floor function of one is one but in this case so you have here here you have floor function of one which is one but here the floor function of 0.5 is zero and the floor function of 0.5 is zero you add these two zero and one is not equal to zero so that's a simpler example this one here is really simple to see because this here the seating function of x is actually an uh, an integer and then the floor function of it of it is is the same as the integer See so always uh, if you have the uh, you know, if you have always if you have like floor function of five is five, ceiling function of seven is seven. Now here's um, so so the answer here is the ceiling function of x. Now uh, we're going to compare now the absolute value of the floor function of x and the floor function of absolute value of x and again here they are not uh, always equal in some cases they are but they are not always equal here's an exact a counter example so if you take um, uh, if you take x equals negative 4.3 so let's see what is the floor function of negative 4.3 is negative 5 what is the absolute value of negative 4.3 floor function uh, is the absolute value of negative 5 is 5. now if i start with taking the absolute value of negative 4.3 that would be 4.3 now, if I take the uh, floor function of absolute value of 4.3, uh, this is equal to 4.3. Uh, okay, if the, then the uh, floor function of 4.3 is 4, and you see they are not equal. Now, to prove um, that the, um, the floor function of negative x is equal to negative ceiling function of x, uh, let's uh, assume x is between n and n plus 1. Now, it's easy if you multiply all these by negative 1, these inequalities uh, change directions. Uh, so you have negative x is greater or equal than negative n minus n minus 1 and less or equal than negative n. 
And now, what is the floor function of negative x? What is the floor function of negative x? Is this here? And what is the seeding function of x? The seeding function of x is, is is n plus one. So this one here is n plus one, and you have a minus before it, so you get you get this one to be equal to this. Very straightforward. Now this is an interesting example. Uh, for what values <coughs> s value or values of x? X is in the interval two three is x between two and three. This quantity is smallest. Now, if you take a, if you take x two at the beginning of the interval, you have two plus two four divided by two is two two minus two you get zero. And if you take x three three plus three is six divided by two is three three minus three is zero so this function or this quantity here is um, uh, zero when x is two and zero when x is three so let's go a little bit further here so <coughs> uh, you see when x is two all three the quantity is zero so when x is two all three the quantity is zero now when x is between two and three you notice the uh, floor function will be two and the ceiling function will be three then this quantity will be five divided by two will be 2.5 2.5 so this quantity this function now here is this between two and three so if you draw this function you see it's it it goes like that so the smallest possible number is really something like minus uh, something like 2.0000001 because two you can't use two two you get zero as soon as you jump a little bit further than two this becomes smallest so if you take two equals 2.0000001, you find the value is negative 0 0.4555. It will never reach the value of negative five because it's at two, it's zero. And then if you want, you can notice also the largest uh, uh, value is when uh, X is like 2.999999, you get the largest which is close to 0.5, but never is equal to 0.5. So that uh, is should be supposed to be 0.5 here. Now, uh, if you sketch these two graphs, they look like a ladder steps, and that's why they are also called step functions. They are not continuous. They are discontinuous functions, and they are on two, but they are not one to one. Continuous functions are one piece, uh, or uh, uh, one piece, or you can dr draw the graph by just not removing your pen from the paper. So. Uh, so if I'm if I'm a sketch graph like that, that's continuous graph. But if I go like this, and then I have to go here, like that, that becomes discontinuous. So I have to take the pen out off of the paper to continue the drawing. That's the case in this situation here, and uh, and you see how uh, it's um, here the floor function of 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 is all zero. When you get to one, it jumped to one and so on and so forth. And this concludes the uh, floor and ceiling functions. Thank you very much and see you soon.